Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. So antibiotics and antimicrobials, are, they're two terms that kind of mean the same thing, but kind of don't. So antibiotics are an, an, a substance that's produced by a microbe that'll kill another microbe. And an antimicrobial is just any compound that'll kill a microbe. So resistance to antimicrobials happens the same way that resistance to a herbicide happens. That, that if you use the same herbicide over and over and over again, it'll kill most of the weeds, but not all of them. And the ones that survive are the ones that reproduce and grow, and, and those are the ones that cause you the problems. And it's the same thing with antimicrobials. One thing I'm going to explain is that the reason we're concerned about antimicrobial resistance and, and use in, in beef cattle and in all livestock industries is that there is a, very much a perception that antimicrobial use and resistance in, in livestock is related to or causes the problems in, in human health. So that's why we've been studying it a lot over the years. So the beef industry has been doing an awful lot of proactive work on this over the years. There's been four, probably four major studies looking at antimicrobial resistance and use in, in beef cattle. And, and the beef industry has a really good story to tell here in terms of the way that, that the beef industry uses these drugs extremely prudently. And that's reflected in the fact that there are extremely low levels of resistance that, that are discovered in, in surveillance projects. The beef industry can say that and other livestock industries are also doing that kind of work. So the point there is that there's four main classes and two of them are, are, are of particular interest. One is the drugs of last resort in human medicine and the other one is they're called low importance, but that means they're not used at all. So that's ionophores. They're not used in human medicine. And that's what we're using most of. Over 90% of what we're using are ones that are never used in human medicine. The drugs that are of very high importance in human health, those are used. Some, some of those drugs are used in beef production as well, but they're used extremely sparingly. Less than 1% of the drug doses that are used in beef production come from those drugs of last resort in human medicine. And that's why we see extremely low levels of resistance, about 1%. And, and, and that's a lot lower than any other livestock industry. And, and it's actually really close to the baseline that you would see in, in cattle that are raised without antibiotics. So, so some of that resistance is just naturally occurring. And, and, and the fact that we're using drugs prudently means that that, that resistance isn't getting selected for. Using an antibiotic doesn't cause the resistance. The resistance is there already. Using the antibiotic can, can, can give a competitive advantage to the bugs that are already resistant and let them grow better. Well, that's kind of the $64,000 question, and, and, and that's the big accusation from, from some activist groups, and that's the big concern for all livestock industries. And it's also a really hard thing to study. So the only attempt to really look at this was in the late 90s, early 2000s, there was a, a big project in Alberta where they looked at drug use and resistance in feedlot cattle as well, in, in, as, well as drug resistance in feedlot health workers, so the people who are using the drugs and exposed to the sick cattle. And what they found was, was that even though those are the people who are exposed to the sick cattle and using the drugs to treat the sick cattle, they were not finding any antimicrobial resistance in the samples from those people. And when they looked, compared the the bacteria from the feedlot workers to bacteria from, from people who were showing up at, at medical clinics in, in southern Alberta, the, there was way lower resistance 
to the feed in the feedlot workers who use the drugs and are exposed to the sick cattle than there were in human patients. So, so that suggests that there's really not a strong link, if any. And some of the, the new research that we're hoping to, to start soon with uh, Dr. Tim McAllister in Lethbridge is going to be look, using some really, really uh, high-tech modern uh, DNA approaches to look at the, the DNA resistance, uh, the resistance genes in the bacteria and finding out if those exact same genes are found in samples from sick people, whether the, the, there's a real identical genetic similarity between, between bacteria in, in cattle and in, and in humans. And that, that'll help really, really answer the question. We've got some preliminary results that, that are looking very encouraging for the beef industry.